Hello and welcome. My name is Justin Jehelka. I work on the C-Lab team for the DevOps organization and backup and recovery. Today we're going to be deploying and activating a Amazon AWS Gateway VTL and then configuring it with Backup Exec. We're going to start right off here in your Amazon AWS console. If you look to the left hand side of the screen, you'll have a list of gateways. Um, this particular region has none. So what we're going to do is deploy a new gateway. Today's demo is for a gateway virtual tape library. So I'm making the appropriate selection here. The next few steps are going to be part of the um, download and configuration of the actual VM. Now we're using VMware as our demo. Um, these steps have already been done, so I may go through the next couple slides a little quickly here, but I'll touch down on each if I can. So we're going to run it on VMware. The other options, Hyper-V. These are for the your host options to host the VTL. Okay, at this point, it'll allow you to download the latest software. We've done that, so I'm going to continue. Because we selected VMware, we're going to get step-by-step -step instructions on how to deploy the gateway in a VMware environment. If you do follow their links, they take you to the website where there's very detailed instructions going step-by-step. -step. So we've done all this already. Um, during the configuration, it's, it's not that complicated. There are two additional disks that you'd need to add, uh, one for your local cache storage and one for the upload buffer. Again, you're providing a on-premise host for the VTL, and the VTL is just a virtual machine. Uh, a couple requirements to be aware of, um, synchronizing the guest time with the host and a pair of virtualized controller. Again, these are all done before the VM, the VTL actually boots up. Today we're going to be using the minimum requirements for the local cache storage and for the upload buffer. At this stage, Amazon provides a calculator for you to, to, to help really assist in estimating the size of the cache and of the upload buffer. We're going to skip through this. Okay, we're at the stage where we're actually going to start the activation of the VTL. Um, at this point, the, the actual VM is turned on. You'd go here to grab the IP address if you're doing DHCP for the VTL. Otherwise, you've already gone in and configured a static IP. So let's go ahead and pop the IP address into the activation portal here. Okay, this is the final step in activating the gateway. This is a pretty important one. Obviously select your time zone. Give the VTL a name. And the medium changer type, this is important. You must choose the AWS Gateway VTL inquiry string for use with semantic products for backup exec or net backup. It's a unique inquiry string that we have coded into the products. And go ahead and activate the storage gateway. Okay, so if you look to the left-hand side of the screen now in our list, you'll see our new VTL has been added. We'll go ahead and select that. From here, we can access the properties of the gateway. Uh, we can create tapes, maintenance as well. We're going to configure the local storage. So the two disks that were added for the local cache and for the upload buffer, we need to assign here. We'll go ahead and save. If you don't do this now, when you're creating your first batch of tapes, it'll ask you to do it there. 
which is where we're going to go next. At this point, I've already done it, so it just shows what's listed. Amazon has some built-in monitoring tools for the VTL um, to provide alarms to an email address. Um, this is for the upload buffer, and the upload buffer contains data that's on its way to the cloud. So if it's getting too full too quick, or just getting too full because of the backup load, and it hits a whatever defined percentage you have here, it'll shoot an alarm to your email. We're going to skip it for the demo. The second one is for dirty data. That is just data that has not been uploaded to AWS. So that's data that's sitting on the VTL that has not made it to AWS to the S3 storage yet. Um, again, same type of configuration. And you just put an email or multiple emails. You can create 10 tapes at once. Um, we're just going to do a couple. We'll do five today. Um, the amount varies, starting at 100 gigs, going up to 2.5 terabytes. If you want to give it a custom barcode prefix, that's the spot to do it. Okay, looks like the tapes are being created. We have our first bit of media. And as you need tapes, this is where you would come. You would come here, create more tapes, import them into Backup Exec. All right, we need to add the gateway to Windows now through the iSCSI initiator, and that's what we're going to do next. You use the same IP for the VTL that we've been using to plug in here. The target should become available to you as soon as that is punched in. You're going to have a target for the media changer, and then you're going to have 10 tape drives. The 10 tape drives is not configurable. So that that's what's included with the VTL, and that's what has to be activated here in the iSCSI initiator. Even if all 10 drives are not planned to be used, they have to be connected here in the iSCSI initiator. You'd go through and manually connect each one. Let's do a quick sample here. I'm going to use a script to add the rest of them. As you can see, everything's connected now, the media changer and all 10 tape drives. So that's all you have to do in the iSCSI initiator. Now we're ready to present the device to Backup Exec. And because it's new, we need to restart services. So we'll do that real quick. OK, now that our services are back up and running, We'll go back into the storage section of Backup Exec. And you'll see the VTL populating. Now in terms of using all 10 drives, um, using all 10 drives in a VTL requires the virtual library unlimited drive option. And if you are not using that, what you would do is you disable nine of the 10 drives in Backup Exec. It's just important that you remember that in, I, in the iSCSI initiator, all 10 drives must be connected there. Okay, now that the VTL is up and running in Backup Exec, what we need to do is we need to import the tapes that were created. You would select the number of slots based on the amount of tapes that you created. So for the demo, we did five. We're gonna run an import with an inventory Select OK. It's just talking about inserting the media into the drives. It's already been done because it's a VTL. OK, our tapes are starting to show up, and they're going to individually be inventoried here.
the import and inventory is successful, we're now able to use the tapes to start writing to. We're going to go through and create a backup to the VTL. Okay, now we have a backup created and ready to be run to the VTL. Go ahead and let that go. Now as backup exec actually writes data to the VTL, the data is copied to both the cache storage and to the upload buffer. These are the two disks that we created during the initial configuration of the VTL. The cache storage keeps the most recently accessed data for a low latency access and the upload buffer serves as a staging area before the data is actually uploaded to the virtual tapes in S3. Back in the Amazon console, you can actually see where the upload buffer starts to fill up here. So we've got the minimum requirement set of 150, so, and it's a small backup anyway, so we're really not going to use much, but you can see it starting to fill up. Now this goes, this will clear out as quick as your, your connection, your outside connection will allow. It's possible for it to get a hefty amount of data sitting in there, and um, after some time it'll clear. Okay, our backup job is now complete. All right, next we'll do a quick restore. When you run a restore job from the VTL, what it does is it first tries to find the data in the local cache, which is a quick, low latency way of getting your data back. Again, the local cache stores the most recently accessed data. So in this case, it's the first job that we've ever run to the VTL. So it's going to be coming from the local cache. So it'll be pretty quick. Now, if it was data that was backed up a while back, um, months ago, something like that, where it was pushed out of the local cache to make way for newer data or just more recently accessed data, then your restore would actually run directly from the cloud, directly from S3, and it'd be significantly slower than this. Okay, now that that's finished, let's jump over to the storage again. And let's just say that we had a tape that we wanted to archive for long-term storage. Along with the VTL comes the VTS, the virtual tape shelf. And this is actually backed by Amazon Glacier which is a different pricing structure than S3. So it's meant for long-term storage, um, data that is very rarely accessed. Um, they have different retention policies in terms of pricing. The user needs to be aware, that's all. So in order to get the tape to Amazon Glacier, to the virtual tape shelf, what you would do is you just run an export job from Backup Exec. We'll export the tape that we just wrote data to. This is an example here. You get your alert request just saying, hey, please remove the tape. Obviously, there's no manual interaction here. This is all done automatically. So if we go back to the AWS console to take a look at the tape cartridges, We'll now see that our tape that we exported is in transit to the virtual tape shelf. The tape could take a while to move, so what we're going to do in the meantime here is we're going to go back into the storage section of the Backup Exec console, and I'd like to just demonstrate how a user would configure the library if they did not have the VTL unlimited drive option. Again, you'd select the, the nine drives from BE, just disable them, and leave one enabled. So down the road, if you need to retrieve a tape from the virtual tape shelf, you would go back into your, your Amazon console, virtual tape shelf area. It's empty right now, but you would select the tape that you want from there. You would do retrieve tape, and that would actually take 
this will take the tape, move it from the VTS back to the VTL that you selected. Now once it's back in your VTL, you simply just run an import job again, like we did when we created the first five tapes. You would just go into slots, find an empty slot, right click, import, and the data would be there, and you'd run your restore. I hope that gives everyone a better understanding of how the Amazon VTL works with Backup of Zek. Thank you very much for watching.